I'm Shreyash and today I'm going to discuss uh, legal reasoning practice sheet. Let's begin. This passage is talking about fundamental rights. The fundamental rights as assured under the constitution guarantees to protect the basic human rights of all citizens of India and are put into effect by the court subject to some limitations. One of such fundamental rights is the right to equality. So this passage is talking about right to equality. It means that every person who lives within the territory of India has an equal right before the law and that there shall be no discrimination based on religion, race, caste, sex and place of birth. So no discrimination. Now it is not only the right of Indian citizens but, but also a right of non-citizens. It also includes equality of prospects in matters of employment, abolition of untouchability and abolition of titles. There are more, more articles like 15, 16, 17 and 18 which further the cause of equality, which highlight the right of equality in detail. This fundamental right is the major foundation of all other rights and privileges granted to Indian citizens. So it is imperative that every citizen of India has easy access to the courts to exercise his or her right to equality. It ensures the guarantee to every person the right to equality before law and equal protection of the laws and prohibits the discrimination. Article 14 emphatically says that the state shall not deny to any person equality before the law or the equal protection of laws subject to reasonable classification. This expression is important, reasonable classification, which also includes that equals would be treated equally and unequals e unequally, which in Hindi is called uh, asamanta me samanta kaadhikar. It is subject to the test of reasonable classification. This is also very important, a very important part of the right to equality, test of reasonable classification and it is related to uh, uh, equality among unequals. The test of reasonable classification states, uh, states that the classification must be based upon intelligible differentia that distinguishes persons or things that are grouped from others that are left out of the group. There, there should be a rational uh, rationality in the difference between those who are in the group and those who are outside the group. If we are some people in that group and some people in group, then that difference in both of them should be a rational connection, a rationality, a proper rational reason that they have been kept inside and they have been kept outside. This is also known as positive discrimination. Which is, which is a method to ensure equality. Now, like I said, this, this differentia must have a rational relation to the object of the classification. Article 15 says that the state shall not discriminate against a person only on the basis of religion, race, sex, place of birth or any of them. Moving on, the next para says that fundamental rights are not absolute rights and parliament could put reasonable restrictions. The grounds for the restriction may be for the advancements, uh, advancement of SCs, STs, OBCs, women and children or general public order or decency, morality, sovereignty and integrity of India or security of state, friendly relations with foreign states, etc. So uh, fundamental rights are not absolute. If you fundamental right, you have the right to freedom of speech and expression. It does, not, it does not mean that you can say anything you want. There are certain reasonable restrictions that the parliament can put on that fundamental right. Now. From Article 15, Clause 3 onwards, the Constitution starts protective discrimination, also known as positive discrimination. For example, Article 15, Clause 3 empowers the state to make special provisions for women and children. Article 15, Clause 4 empowers the state to make special provisions for advancement of socially and educationally backwards or SCs or STs. Now, Article 15, Clause 4 goes one step further and empowers the state to make reservations in admission into educational inclu institutions, including private schools or colleges, whether or not aided by the government. But there is, there is one exception to this rule in Article 15, Clause 5. It is only minority educational institutions, such as Badarsas, have been left out of this provision, which essentially means that if there is a private institution and the state has made a law mandating it to admit certain number of students from minority communities like SCs or STs, then 
this law will not apply to minority educational institutions such as madrasas or missionary schools so this is important to remember thus article 15 clause 3 and clause 4 are the basic basis of reservation in the country the passage further states that article 16 clause 4 clause 3 clause 4 clause 4a and clause 4b provide further strength to all sorts of discrimination among the people on account of their unequal status 16 clause 3 allows the state to make any law making residence qualifications necessary in case of government jobs residence qualifications thus making the domicile provision strong article 16 clause 4 allows the state to make reservations for any backward class of citizens which in the opinion of the state is not adequately represented in the services this opens the door for obc reservations article 16 clause 4a empowers the state to make reservations in promotions even in promotions for scs sts and obcs article 17 abolishes untouchability article 19 clause 5 allows the state to impose reasonable restrictions on the freedom of movement and occupation to protect the interest of scheduled tribes so this is the passage the passage covers the right to equality essentially from article 14 to article 18 now let's look at the first question the first question states the Indian Railways issued a notification where any employee not having any children would not be eligible to take any emergency leave. Prior to such notification, every employee of the Indian Railways was eligible to take two emergency leaves per month. This notification was challenged on the grounds of being discriminatory. You have to decide the validity of this notifi notification. So, when we were discussing fundamental rights, uh, we also discuss something known as reasonable restrictions and uh, that uh, a certain form of rationality is required to differentiate between persons. So the first option is the notification is valid as it makes a reasonable classification. So you have to ask yourselves whether the classification that is made between persons who are li who are the beneficiaries of this notification and persons who are not the beneficiaries of this notification. This notification puts certain persons in one category and certain persons in the other category. So the, uh, the, the rationality which divides those two groups of persons, is it rational or not? So what is it? Persons having children and persons not having children. And what is it concerned about? Emergency leaves. So what does this mean that those people who don't have children, they are not subject to emergencies? It doesn't make any sense. So the classification is not reasonable. So the not notification should be invalid. So there are two options, C or D, which say that the notification is invalid. Let's look at C. The notification is invalid as every employee must get emergency leave. Or the notification is invalid as there is no reasonability in making such a classification. Now when answering in CLAT, you have to select the most appropriate option according to the passage, not according to your own logic or not according to facts and not according to the general knowledge, right? So, in the passage, uh, reasonability is a very important part. So, D should be the answer of it because there is no rational relation. There. It is not reasonable that persons who do not have children should not get the benefit of such a notification, right? They are also prone to emergencies. Okay, let's move on to the second question, which asks... The entrance exams for jobs in the Gram Panchayat of Village X were to be conducted. According to the notification, one of the requirements was that every candidate must possess either a permanent house or own an agricultural field in the Village X in order to appear for the exam. This notification was challenged on the grounds of being discriminatory. Decide the validity of the question. Now, after, the, after reading the question, you must you must assess, you must decide what the question is really talking about. So, this question is that for this job, either you should have a house in that village or an agricultural land. So, you have to decide whether it is discriminatory or not. Now, the first option is, the notification is valid as it makes a reasonable classification. The second option is, the notification is valid as it would be beneficial if the employees are residents of Village X. 
see the notification is invalid as there is no reasonability in making such a classification or both a and b now the question is ki agar aapko naukri isi basis pe deni hai ki candidate ek piece of land wa own karta hai ki nahi to there is no reasonableness in this classification to classification kin logo ke beech mein ho raha hai un logo ke beech mein जिन जिनको जिनके पास या तो उस विलेज में ज़मीन है या तो नहीं है तो जिनके पास है वो एलिजिबल है जिनके पास ज़मीन नहीं है वो एलिजिबल नहीं है तो इन दोनों चीज़ों के बीच में उन उस लाइन ऑफ डिफरेंस के बीच में कोई रैशनल क्लासिफिकेशन तो है नहीं क्योंकि अगर किसी के पास जस्ट बिकॉज अ पर्सन डज नॉट ओन अ पीस ऑफ लैंड इन दैट विलेज डजन मीन दैट ही कैन नॉट डू अ जॉब देयर राइट सो यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट वेन एवर अ लॉ इज मेड in in the pursuit of positive discrimination under right to equality there must be a rational relation between one between those who are being put in one group and those who are put, being put in the other so you have to uh, find rationality now let's look at the next question which say, which asks state x had 40% of its residential area covered by dense hilly forests The state government made a law that there would be a 25% reservation in all government jobs for people who are residing such areas of the state. The law was challenged on the grounds of being discriminatory. Decide the validity of this notification. Once again I'd ask you to look at the rationality. Option A, the law is valid as the government can make law for the upliftment of the socially and educationally backward class. The law is invalid as it discriminates between the residents of the state who reside in non-hilly areas. Option C: The law is invalid as it discriminates between residents of the state and the residents of other states. Or option D: Both B and C. According to the passage, the state is allowed to make laws for what? For the upliftment of socially and educationally backward class. Let's look at the passage where it is written. it is written in this para right article 15 clause 4 empowers the state to make special provisions for advancement of socially and educationally backwards so it is a very direct question according to article 15 clause 4 sure the state can make a law for the upliftment of the socially and educationally backwards so the correct answer is a let's look at question 4 District X comprised an area which was inhabited by a local tribe for centuries. Why industries wanted to set up their factory on the outskirts of District X for which they needed to visit the interior parts of the area. They were however stopped from doing that by a government order. Decide the validity of the order. Let's look at the mention of tribes in the passage. In the last line, Article 19 clause 5 allows the state to impose reasonable restrictions on freedom of movement and occupation to protect the interests of scheduled tribes what does it mean it means that if y industries wants to set up a factory on the outskirts of district x where there is a tribal population sure it has the fundamental right to do so the fundamental right to uh, movement and occupation but there is a reasonable restriction which we have just seen so the correct op option would be the order is valid as it was to protect the interest of the tribe which it it is a very direct question kyunki us art article 15 mein directly likha hai ki the state can make a law imposing a restriction on the right to freedom of movement and occupation in the interest of certain tribes to isme bhi ek tribe hai jiske interest ko protect karne ke liye law ne ye restriction lagaya तो ओके द आंसर इज ए लेट्स लुक एट क्वेश्चन फाइव विच स्टेट्स दैट एक्स वाई जेड इज अ कैथलिक मिशनरी स्कूल लोकेटेड इन एक्स सिटी द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ द स्टेट इशूड अ नोटिफिकेशन डायरेक्टिंग द स्कूल टू रिजर्व टेन परसेंट ऑफ द सीट्स फॉर स्टूडेंट्स कमिंग फ्रॉम सोशली एंड एजुकेशनली बैकवर्ड क्लास डिसाइड द वेलिडिटी ऑफ द नोटिफिकेशन नाउ जब हमने पैसेज पढ़ा था तो हमने स्पेशल ध्यान दिया था आर्टिकल 15 क्लॉज 5 पे विच गोज वन स्टेप फर्दर एंड एम्पावर्स द स्टेट टू मेक रिजर्वेशन इन एडमिशन इन टू एजुकेशनली इन टू एजुकेशनल इंस्टीट्यूशन इंक्लूडिंग प्राइवेट स्कूल और कॉलेजेस और उसके बाद लिखा है ओनली माइनॉरिटी एजुकेशनल इंस्टीट्यूशन 
have been left out of this provision. What provision? Reservations. So, what is happening in this question? The state is asking a Catholic missionary school to make 10% reservations. And what did we study on that? That the minority educational institutions are that are an, those institutions are an exception to the rule of reservation. So, the notification should be invalid. So, the correct answer is D. So, this was all about fundamental rights.